It has been unfairly labelled as one of the worst movies ever made. Yet it's from that proclamation the film has gained not only a whole new audience and a brand new fan base, but has since become a cult classic. Yes, we're talking about Plan 9 from Outer Space, and this is Sign 5. Plan 9 from Out of Space history has become the stuff of legend. Being the brainchild of the now infamous director Edward D. Wood Jr., the film was originally called Grave Robbers from Outer Space, but was forced to change its title as the film's financial backers were from the Baptist Church. Alas, the film was released with no fanfare, glitz or glamour in 1957, and unlike most other movies which became success stories upon release, Plan 9 had to wait 23 years before it gained both notoriety and fame. As was often the fate for many B-grade low-budget productions of the 50s, the film fell into total obscurity and would have been completely forgotten if it wasn't discovered by Harry and Michael Medved, who stated in their 1980 book, The Golden Turkey Award, that it was the worst film ever made because it was full of goofs and gaffes. Example of which were boom microphones and shadows being visible in shot, inconsistent lighting between shots, gravestones which move when someone touched them, and the sets that were so cheap, they wouldn't pass for a primary school theatre production. But as fortune would have it, it was from this book that not only did the film gain a large amount of media coverage and from it an all new fan base, but it even inspired Tim Burton to produce the biography film Ed Wood in 1994, which focuses on Ed attempting to make Plan 9. Yet in what is a cruel twist of irony, despite all the fame, the glory and the money the film eventually made, Ed Wood never got to experience any of it as he died financially destitute in 1978. Although the film's premise is based around flying saucers and aliens arriving on Earth, it's actually at its best when it focuses on being a murder mystery, with dead people appearing as zombies, called ghouls in the film, as they attack other people. Had this storyline continued, it would have made for a quaint little horror movie. However, once the alien story comes to the fore, the horror element of the film unfortunately falls away, as it morphs into a standard science fiction story. In fact, it is the titular aliens who are creating an army of zombies to demonstrate their superior power to humanity, hence the film's original title being Grave Robbers from Outer Space. As has been well documented, the film features Ed Wood's close friend and Dracula star Bella Lugosi in what was his final role. The random footage, which was shot before the film started production, was inserted haphazardly into the movie to give it some star power. Unfortunately, this loving tribute to Lugosi effectively backfired as his character had to be doubled by another person who was not only much taller than Lugosi, but whose face had to remain hidden, which in turn made his character somewhat farcical. But somewhat poetically, that's why it works. It's probably no surprise to learn that people mostly focus on the negative aspects of the film, yet there are some elements of it that actually work really well, such as the mood lighting and the atmosphere, which give a really nice noir feel, especially for the nighttime scenes. Admittedly, most of that was necessary because the filming set was so small they needed to hide the background, hence the reason for all the smoke. In among the menagerie of characters are the aliens themselves, whose race and species is never identified, yet Wood had the insight to ensure they didn't speak any known language, even though it was English on screen, and as such needed a translation device to communicate with the humans. Moreover, when the humans and aliens finally meet, it's the humans who are aggressive and antagonistic. In addition, the film, like many others around it, took full advantage of the flying saucer craze of the 1950s, including the government conspiracies to cover them up. It's also interesting to note that the image of the zombified Inspector Clay, carrying an unconscious Mrs. Trent, follows the typical sci-fi trope of aliens or robots carrying attractive women. Yet this image did not appear in the film's poster, which is in direct contrast to what other movies did at the time to generate publicity. When it's all said and done, it's no surprise the film falls into the so bad it's good category and is clearly a B-grade production made really quickly on a minimalistic budget. Yet it's obvious to see it was produced with genuine heart from Wood, who really did believe this film would be his opus and put him on the map, which eventually it did. Finally, one of the best tributes and examples of affection for the film was the release of a detailed and well-researched independent documentary called Flying Sources Over Hollywood, The Plan 9 Companion, released in 1991. Even today, this documentary is the best reference for anyone keen on learning more about the film's production history and Edward himself. In the end, no one asked the obvious question, what did plans 1 to 8 entail? Well, as Criswell once said, we are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And that is why you should join us again for another Sci-Fi Spective. <laughs>